to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim the news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in Psalm 38, verse 4, David said, My sins have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They're too heavy for me to bear. All of us can repeat those words of David when it comes to the sin problem. At times in our life, we feel the, the sting of sin and we feel the, the weight of sin that man can't bear alone. But the good news is we don't have to. The nature of our God is that He is ready to forgive, willing to forgive, and that He has made a way of forgiveness in Christ Jesus. And so today we welcome you to our study of the nature of God. As we mentioned, today we're going to be thinking about part of God's nature that is so wonderful and amazing and encouraging is that God is a forgiving God. As always, our lessons are being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday evening. They'd love to have you for one of their Bible studies or worship services. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about the church or God's plan of salvation, you'll find people there who love God and who are concerned about lost souls. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of God's Word. If you uh, visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study materials. We have videos that you can download, audio lessons, transcripts, and just a, a good variety of study material. Also, we want to encourage you for your iPhone or Android phone, download our latest apps from the Play Store or from the Apple Store as well. And if you've got a question that you've been struggling with, we'd be happy to help you with that in any way. You can also download our media, as we mentioned, or you can request a DVD or CD of today's lesson or any of our previous lessons. As we think today about the nature of God, who is God? What is God like? What's His, what's His character? What's His nature like? Today, as we mentioned, we're thinking about that wonderful aspect of God being a forgiving God. And friend, that's such a practical idea for everyone who's of the age of accountability, who knows right from wrong, Sin is something that all of us have to deal with. From the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 right up to the present time today, the Bible teaches that man has had to deal with the weight and the sting of sin. Romans 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When, when the Bible tells us that all have sinned, well, we can make that even more practical. If all have sinned, I have sinned, you have sinned. We all have to deal with sin from time to time. And of course, the consequences of sin is devastating. The soul who sins shall surely die, Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 tells us that, that God doesn't want it that way, but His very nature cannot be closely associated or in a relationship with sin. The Bible says the Lord's ear is not heavy, that He cannot hear. God doesn't have a hearing problem. His arm's not shortened, that it cannot save. God doesn't have a defective arm that He can't reach out and save you. But your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. And so sin is a very serious problem that all of an accountable age have to deal with. Now, the good news is, thankfully, because of who God is, because of His nature, God has made a way of salvation from sin in Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 2, verse 24, the Bible says, He Himself, Jesus Himself, 
bore our sins in his own body upon the tree, the cross, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripes we've been healed. How wonderful it is to know that the God of heaven has made a way to escape and to overcome sin through Jesus Christ. Isn't it wonderful to know that you can have a second chance? Everybody loves second chance. You ever made a bad grade on a test and you thought, Ooh, I'd like to have that one back. Or done something or said something and you thought, Ooh, I wish I could do that over. Well, friend, that's what we get in Christianity. If anyone is in Christ. Listen to this. If anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All has become new. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 29. And so Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. He's tasted death for every man. Hebrews 2 verse 9. And he is the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours alone, for the sins of the whole world. And so let's think today about God being a forgiving God and, and, and how God's forgiveness is so wonderful. Friend, I want, you, I want us to understand, God wants us to understand from the Bible that He truly is a forgiving God. I think sometimes people are left with the wrong impression of what God really wants. Now don't get me wrong, I understand that God will deal with sin that God gets angry at sin and sinners, Psalm 7 verse 4, Psalm 7 verse 11, and, and that God doesn't want anything to do with sin. But friend, the real heart of God is God wants to save and forgive people of their sins. Realize this with me. Our God is ready. He stands ready to forgive me and to forgive you. I want you to notice what the Bible says in Psalm 86. Listen to Psalm chapter 86, verse number 5. The scripture says this. Here's the heart of God. For you, Lord, are good, listen to this, and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all who call upon you. Psalm 85, verse 2. David would say, you have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sins. And so when we think about the nature of God and forgiveness, how wonderful it is to know that, that although God will deal with sin, God really stands ready and wanting to forgive man of their sins. Psalm 103 verses 10 through 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed their transgressions from them. Psalm 130 verses 3 and 4, If you, O Lord, were to mark iniquities, who could stand? But listen to the next verse. But there is forgiveness with you. Psalm 130 verse 4, There is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Friend, as you think about the God we serve, realize this. He's a forgiving God. I am so thankful every day. I am so thankful. We ought to all be thankful God wants to forgive, he's ready to forgive, and that he gives second chances as we strive to repent and do what God wants us to. You know, when you think about the God of the Bible, not only is God ready to forgive, God wants to forgive all our sins in Christ Jesus. All the way back to the Old Testament in Jeremiah 31 verse 34, and mentioned in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, God said, I'll be merciful to their sins and their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. What does God really want to do with sin? God wants it to be taken care of and God wants to forget it. I'll be merciful to their sins or lawless deeds I'll remember no more. God wants to put sin in the past, wants us to do that, of course, through the death and sacrifice of His Son. Psalm 51 verse 2, Isaiah 1 verse 18 again clearly teaches us that God wants to remove that sin. Though your sins are as scarlet, God said, I'll make them white as snow. Uh, God has covered and taken care of all of our sins. And when you hear the words of the New Testament based on the sacrifice of Jesus, based on the fact that, that Jesus is Lord in Christ, Peter stands up and no doubt with joy proclaims. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for 
the remission of sins. Matthew 26, 28, Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. And so not only is God ready to forgive, God wants sins to be dealt with and God wants to forget it and put it in the past. And so we want to think about God in the way that the Bible describes Him as it relates to sin. You know, as I think about God's forgiveness, God's long-suffering really beautifully illustrates how He is ready to forgive and wants to deal with sin according to the death of His Son. Think about God's long-suffering nature. Uh, mentioned in Numbers 14, 18 that God is long-suffering as well as 2 Peter 3 and verse number 9. Now, 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says this, the Lord is, it's in a context about the second coming of Christ, God wanting people to be saved, and really God giving people time to get right with Him. The Bible says, the Lord is not slow concerning His promises, as some count slowness. They're asking, God, why haven't you come yet? Why are you being so slow? What's the delay? And the point is, it's not that God's slow and that He can't come. The Lord's not slow concerning His promises, as some count slowness, but, and how thankful we ought to be for this, but He's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Friend, realize part of God's forgiveness is seen in His long-suffering nature. That God has been patient. You look at Israel's history. God was so extremely patient with rebellious and hard-hearted Israel at times. Chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity. And then we think about our lives. How many times have I made mistakes? Have I done things I shouldn't have done? Have I got caught up in sins that I knew better? that we knew better than to get caught up in. And aren't you thankful God didn't come at that very moment? God's been long-suffering, patient, and kind-hearted toward each one of us, and that so beautifully illustrates His forgiveness and love for man. But you know what else really illustrates in a beautiful fashion? The fact that God is a forgiving God. Friend, you couldn't illustrate it any more clearly and beautifully than the death of God's Son. Why did God send His Son into this world to die such a horrible and cruel death? Here's why. God wants me and God wants you. God wants us to be forgiven. Somebody says, well, how forgiving of a God is your God? So much so. He sent His Son to die a horrible, gruesome, cruel death because that's how bad he wants man to obey the gospel, live with Him forever, and ultimately be forgiven of sin. Listen to Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. While we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one might die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone might dare to die. Listen to verse 8. God demonstrates. Here's the, here's the demonstration. Here is the, 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 the vividness of the picture. God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You want to know how forgiving our God is? He wants to forgive us so much so that He sent His Son to die for my sins and for yours. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so what a wonderful picture of the forgiveness of God. But as you think about it more on a, a practical scale, as we think about it more in relation maybe to people in the Bible, I think that picture can even become more vivid. Think about some people in the Bible. Let, let, let's make it practical and let's make it relevant. As you think about God's forgiveness and how powerful that is, I want you to think about some people in the Old and New Testament who got caught up, maybe even in some pretty serious and what we might think of as heinous sins, and yet God was more than willing to forgive them. Old Testament example is that of David. David is a prime example of God's forgiveness, the fact that our God is a forgiving God in the Old Testament. In 2 Samuel 11 and 12, David gets caught up in sin with Bathsheba. 
she's a married woman. Her husband has gone out to war. David is uh, on the rooftop. He sees her bathing. He desires her. He uh, begins to lust after her in her heart. He takes her, has relations with her. Uh, a, a child is conceived from that. He ultimately will lie, deceive. Her husband will eventually die because of David's uh, orders and just a whole litany of sins. Beginning with that lust of the eye, there is a whole litany of sins that ends up with a man dying because of his sin. And yet, when David was big enough, man enough, to own up to that sin, I've sinned, David would say, Psalm 51 clearly teaches that David could be forgiven. Let me, let me read to you those words from Psalm 51. You, you talk about a man who got caught up in sin and who was forgiven by God. Here's a perfect example of that. Psalm 51 verses 1 and 2. Concerning that event with Bathsheba, David would say, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And so throughout that whole psalm, David will bear out his heart to God in repentance. And God does forgive David. And friend, God can forgive me and you as well. Adam and Eve are an example. Genesis 3, they ate of the forbidden fruit that God told them not to, and yet a way of salvation was provided for them. Think about Peter. Peter, you know, was a great follower of the Lord, but Peter denied, actually denied the Lord. Weren't you with him? Oh, no, not me. Uh, your speech betrayed, surely you, oh, no, no, no. He, the Bible says in Matthew 26 that Peter, if you can imagine this, even began to curse and to swear, I don't know the man. And yet in John 21, Jesus gave Peter an opportunity to make that right. And Peter went on to do, even from denying the Lord, Peter went on to do great things for the cause of God and Christ. Think about Saul of Tarsus, wreaking havoc on the church, holding the coats of those who stoned Stephen, dragging men and women to prison. And yet Saul, who would later become Paul, one of the greatest evangelistic workers in the New Testament, could be forgiven. Friend, we say all that to say this. Sometimes there are people who say to themselves, you know, I, I believe all that's true, but not me. I've done so many bad things. I, I've been involved in so many sins. God could never forgive me. Friend, that denies the power and the ability of God to forgive. And we've already seen in the Bible that God wants to do that, that He's more than willing to do that. If I will only accept and obey the gospel and live faithful, God wants to forgive my, regardless of what you've done, regardless of how heinous it may be, regardless of how the, the, the guilt that you might be bearing over that, if you will accept the gospel, if you'll put your faith in Jesus, let God do the rest. God's promise to forgive. Don't limit God's power of forgiveness by your own guilt or burden of sin. And so the examples we mentioned are to help us see God is more than able to forgive any person's sin, regardless of what it may be, if they'll come to Jesus and obey the gospel. But friend, let's also realize this. As we talk about the forgiveness of God and what a wonderful aspect of God's character that is, let's also realize forgiveness comes at an extremely high cost. I don't want to make light of sin. I don't want to take advantage of sin. I know we all sin from time to time, but I want to realize just how serious the cost of forgiveness is as well. Forgiveness, did you know? that forgiveness is what caused the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to leave heaven? Listen to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, one of the most beautiful verses in all the New Testament. The Bible says this, you know the grace, and grace carries the idea of gift there, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what do you mean grace or gift or offering? You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though He was rich. Yet for your sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. You ever really stopped and thought about that verse? Jesus is in the very was in the very place we're fighting every day to go. He was with God. He was 
in the heavenly realm. He was near to the heart of God, and yet he left that, came to this low land of sin and sorrow. He gave his life an offering. He became a poor man, as it were, so that one day I could share in the riches that he's offered to mankind. What's the cost of forgiveness? Number one, Jesus left heaven so that forgiveness could be made available. Forgiveness also demanded as part of the cost that Jesus live a perfect life. Can you imagine trying to live a life free of sin? Not only that, but Satan throwing everything he had at you, as we see in Matthew chapter 4, and yet the Bible records. He was tempted at all points as we are. Jesus has faced it. He was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. And then, friend, when you think about the, the horrible cost of sin, realize this. Jesus suffered a horrible, cruel death because that's what forgiveness demanded. Atonement, sacrifice, propitiation. Jesus suffered that death as part of the cost of forgiveness. Matthew 26, 28, Jesus said, This is my blood of the new covenant that was shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's His blood that made that sacrifice available in whom we have redemption through His blood. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, It's the blood of Christ that cleanses sin. It's His death uh, that made it available. And when, when you think about Jesus being beaten, mocked, spit upon, uh, slapped by the leaders of that day, nailed to a cruel cross, hanging in agony, and when Jesus said, It is finished, in Matthew 27, friend, it's that, that death on that cross that is such a, a high cost of sin today. Thank God that He paid it and how wonderful that is. But let's realize that it didn't come easy, that it was a very difficult thing for Jesus to do. But as you think about the forgiveness of God, we need to kind of bring things to full circle as we talk about God's forgiveness by realizing that God has a plan and God has a way. And if God is the one who offers that forgiveness, whatever God's plan and way is to be forgiven, well, that's what man's got to do to get right with God. And so as we think about what must a person do to be forgiven of sin, uh, if someone's a child of God, naturally, they've got to acknowledge that sin, realize they've got sin in their life, and be willing to repent of it. Uh, the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. 1 John 1, verses 7 through 9. We find people in the Bible who are great examples of that. David said, I've sinned. 2 Samuel 12, verse 23. Saul said, I've sinned. I've erred exceedingly. I've played the fool. 1 Samuel 15, verse 24. And so throughout the Bible, there is the recognition, hey, I've got sin in my life. I need to own up to that and I need to deal with it in a God-approved way. If you've never obeyed the gospel, friend, the good news is God's forgiveness is available to you. Do you believe Jesus is the Savior of the world? What must a person do to be saved from sin, to access the forgiveness of God? Well, friend, there's no other way to be forgiven except Jesus, nor is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse number 6. Do you believe Christ? Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Here's what Jesus said in John 8, 24. Unless you believe that I am He, that I'm the Savior of the world, you'll die in your sin. You've got to believe in Christ, but as we believe in Christ, then we also, the Bible teaches, must be willing to repent. And repentance means I've got to do my best to turn from a life of sin and turn to God. Repentance is not, the idea is not that I can never sin again or that I'm going to be perfect 100% of the time. We all from time to time make mistakes, but I'm going to change my way of thinking and do my best to change my way of acting about sin. Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, unless you repent you'll all likewise perish. Peter preached, repent and turn, or repent and be converted, that your sins might be blotted out. Acts chapter 3, verse number 19. Once we believe in Jesus, we're willing to turn away from sin and turn to God, then you've got to acknowledge 
with the mouth that Jesus is the Savior. Romans 10 verse 10 says this, With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Having made that good confession, friend, the Bible teaches that to be forgiven, to have your sins washed away, and to be saved, to access God's forgiveness initially, one must be baptized. It's where we contact the blood of Jesus that saves. Romans 6 verses 3 and 4, we're buried with Him in baptism into His death. That's where we contact the death of Jesus. That's why Jesus would say, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. This is why Peter preached in Acts 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. And this is why Saul of Tarsus was told, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. God's plan is contacting the blood and the death of Jesus by reenacting the death, burial, and resurrection. We die to sin, repentance, we're buried with Him in baptism, and we rise up out of that to walk in newness of life. And friend, to really stay in line with God's forgiveness as we ought to, we want to do our best every day to walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 and strive to fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6 verse 12 and be faithful until death. And so today we think about how wonderful it is. Just think about the wonder and the beauty of this. How beautiful and how wonderful it is that the God we serve, the God who created this universe, is ready, willing, wants to forgive man, wants to remember our sins no more, and has made a way we can do that through Jesus Christ. If you've never obeyed the gospel, you're not a child of God. Friend, we're begging you today. Won't you become a Christian in view of the wonder and splendor of God's forgiveness? Maybe you've fallen away from the Lord. Maybe you were a member of the Lord's church, but you kind of got away from that. Friend, I assure you, God wants you to come home. Christians want you to come home. As we think about God's forgiveness, let's each be encouraged today to live a life faithful to the Lord so that one day we can hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. May God help us to do just that. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.